Hello everyone, my name is Miguel Greenberg and I'm here in my hotel room in Switzerland. Today was the, the third and last main conference day at EuroPython. And earlier today, someone at the conference asked me a question about SQL Alchemy. And that made me realize that there are a number of misconceptions and bad practices regarding how a lot of people use SQL Alchemy. So before I forget, I, I have a little bit of time uh, here before I go to sleep and I decided to record this quick video. And I think I counted four uh, tips that I'm going to give you. Uh, and uh, I hope they will help you uh, work with SQL Alchemy and in particular with Flask uh, together with SQL Alchemy in a much better way. So tip number one, uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of code from my microblog application, which is the, the application featured in my Flask mega tutorial. Uh, so I'm going to go into, uh, into the models file and here in the user model, uh, which is right here. Uh, so this is, this is a fairly big model. Uh, so here's an example. When people see this uh, method, which adds a notification, uh, a lot of people tell me that I forgot to commit the session. So they, they say you added the object, but you forgot to commit. And they think it's a bug. And that, that's actually incorrect. This was done on purpose. Uh, and the tip number one is that commits in random functions in your code is almost always a bad idea. So the, the problem with this is that when you run a commit, you have no control over what things are written to the database. If you had a commit here, then for sure your notification object will get saved to the database. But maybe code that run before this uh, added other other things, other objects to the session, and all those are going to get committed along with this notification. And writing random objects without knowing uh, could lead to bugs that are very difficult to find, and uh, also it can lead to partial writes to the database because if if you commit right here, which is let's say it's in the middle of a request, uh, you're going to return from this method. Uh, there's going to be more stuff going on. Eventually the request may fail. Maybe, maybe uh, your application crashes or you decide that there's an error. And now you committed part of the work. So there, there's, it's going to be difficult to undo. So if you cannot commit inside a internal function, uh, where do you commit? And the, the best way I have to explain this is that you should commit at the highest level possible. So, so you should go up the stack and commit at the highest level possible where basically you have uh, a unit of work uh, pretty much uh, you know, handled there. So in the case of uh, a Flask application, uh, you could consider a request as a unit of work. So in those cases, what makes the most sense almost always is to have a single commit before you return from your request handler function, the view function. So, uh, so this add notification, let's find, let's go to the main blueprint and in routes, uh, let's find add notification here. So this is what we call it. So you can see that this function does a bunch of things. It basically processes a form. It, it also adds another thing. So, so here's an example of a random object that was added before that could have been written inside this function inadvertently. You, you, you don't even realize it. So basically everything is done and then when we're sure that everything is okay and we have nothing else to do, then a single commit writes everything in one go. And this is not only safer, but it's also more efficient. You're going to be doing a single commit. Note that uh, after the commit, the only thing that remains 
is uh, not, not related to database. I set a flash message and then I just return my response and that's it. So uh, always commit at the highest level possible. Uh, if you have a uh, something that is not a web application, uh, say maybe uh, a salary worker, then you will commit in the main task functions that you have for salary. So, so the task function will, will start and then before it ends, after everything is done, then you commit. Uh, if it's a long running function that does uh, things periodically, then maybe your unit of work will be an iteration in your main loop. So you will commit at the end of the loop. So you will have to adapt this to whatever you're doing, whatever makes sense, but think about units of work and uh, never commit in, uh, in a place where you have less than that unit of work done because then it's difficult to undo. So that, that was tip number one. Uh, I think I have, uh, so here I have uh, a before request handler. Uh, before I get into tip number two, I realize that you could validly argue that I have a commit here and I just told you not to. Uh, so uh, in this particular case, this, this commit is supposed to update the last visit time for the user. And uh, in this case, I consider this a unit of work as well, uh, regardless of what happens during the request, which is going to run after this function ends, uh, I want to update the last visit time to the user, uh, that the user uh, was on the site. So I consider this a like little self-contained thing. So in this case, I think it makes sense to make an exception and do a commit. Uh, because this is a before request handler in Flask, you're pretty much guaranteed that nothing else uh, could be in the session uh, because each request starts with a brand new database session. So uh, let's go on tip number two. Uh, and this is also another thing that a lot of people uh, call me on and they think I do this wrong. So if you look at this before request handler, uh, people tell me that I forgot to add the user to the session, that I, I modify the user, which uh, is based on Flask login. It's its current user uh, that I get from Flask login. And I'm told that I forgot to add the, uh, the user to the session. And this isn't necessary, actually. Uh, when you load an object from the database, and in this case, just by, by referencing current user that triggers Flask login to call my user loader callback. And in that function, there's going to be a database read for the user. So the user is going to be loaded from the database. Uh, implicitly, SQL Alchemy puts that object in the session. So it is already in the session. Uh, and just to show you so, so that you understand this a little more, uh, because some, some of you might be confused by that. I'm going to switch to my, uh, to my terminal. And here I have, uh, I have a, an example that I think will help clarify how, uh, how this works. So in this application, I have a user model that is uh, it's very simple, only has a name attribute. And then I'm going to import my database. So let's, let's load a user. This will be pretty much like uh, Flask login would do when, when a user sends a request. Let's say I want user number five, just to pick one. And let me show you three attributes of the SQL Alchemy session that probably you don't know about. These are called new, deleted, and dirty. So these three attributes are lists of all the objects that are going to be committed. So these are the objects that uh, are going to uh, trigger changes in the database. And uh, they are the, uh, the new objects, so objects that you created as part of this session. Uh, these are the objects that were deleted in this session. And finally, these are the objects that have been modified. So, so uh, 
is going to be an update on, on an existing uh, object in the database. So the three lists are empty right now because there are no, uh, no objects that we, we changed or added or removed. But let's see what happens. Now I'm going to change the name of this user. Uh, let's call it foo. Now let's take a look. And now my dirty list automatically has this object. So you can see that even though we, we don't know exactly how it works, uh, you, you know now that there's a link between an object and the session in which you, uh, you basically loaded the object. So, so the link is there. Uh, and when the object is modified, automatically gets added to the dirty list. So if I now do a DB session commit, then the object is going to be updated in the database and there's no need to add it again. If, if, if you do the DB session add uh, for an object that's already in the session, it doesn't matter, it doesn't hurt anything, but it's not necessary. You don't have to do it. So that was uh, the tip number two. Uh, the third tip is somewhat related. Uh, so you may think that now that I committed the database, the association between this, this user number five and the session is gone. But uh, if you think that you're wrong, so let's see what happens if I change the name of this, uh, of this object once again. You can see that the link remained. So committing a session does not clear the session. Any objects that are in the session uh, are removed from, from these three lists of new deleted and dirty objects, but they are not removed from the session. They remain in the session. So uh, the, the question is how, uh, how do you remove them? And uh, the reason why sometimes you, you do want uh, objects to be removed or uh, unlinked from a session uh, is that in some cases you, you may have uh, long running processes that are not based on a web application. Uh, this, isn't, this isn't a problem for, uh, for Flask applications, for example, because Flask SQL Alchemy always clears the session when a request ends. And what it does is, uh, let's, let's commit this to, to get that change out. And then what it does is calls db session remove, which breaks the links with any objects. Basically, it clears the association between any objects and the session. Uh, or in other words, it makes a brand new session. Uh, so if I now change this one more time, the dirty now is not affected because the user now is not linked to that session anymore. So, so Flask does, uh, I'm sorry, Flask SQL Alchemy does this. So it's not a problem uh, for your web application. But if you have a long running process, as I was saying, uh, maybe a salary worker or, or something of that sort, uh, maybe a, a process that, that is not salary, but that runs uh, for a long time, then if you don't remove the session, you might be accumulating lots of objects and they all use memory. They remain linked to the session. They don't go away. So uh, for, for those processes, it's always good to call remove when you finish a unit of work. We're back at this concept of units of work. Uh, Flask SQL Alchemy does this uh, at the end of the request, which is usually the, at the end of a unit of work. Uh, so that's tip number three. Uh, so you, you now know that you need to remove the session to basically clear it and remove any, any links to any objects uh, and, and start with a brand new session that's empty. That's pretty good. The problem is that uh, this can be a little bit inconvenient. You have to remember to call remove uh, it's sort of annoying to have to do this. So the solution that I typically used is based on a context manager. Uh, this is ideal when, when you have resources that have a, uh, a, a way to close that need to be closed, like file, for example, context managers provide the best, uh, the best usage. 
because then, then the closing of the resource happens automatically when you exit the context manager. So let me show you an example. Uh, this is actually very simple. It doesn't need to be uh, complicated. It basically, I have a DB session context manager uh, and this, uh, this yields the, the session. So, so this is going to be when you enter the context manager block in case you're not familiar with the, uh, this, this way of defining context manager. Uh, so this is going to basically give you a session. And then if, if you selected auto permit, then it's going to even commit the session for you. So you have to even remember to commit. Uh, and then if there are any errors, it like flask uh, or flask SQL alchemy, it rolls the session back and then raises the error again. And then at the very end, when uh, when everything is done, then it removes the session. So you are back with a clean session. So let me show you how to use this. Let's go back into Python. Let's import user. And then from DB session, let's get the context manager, which is called the same. So now, I can say with db session and then here I can load a user. Uh, for example, let's get our friend, user number five. Let's change the number to foo and that's it. And this uh, basically at the end, if there are no errors, then uh, the, the database session will be committed and then and then the session will be removed. And now if I let's try to rename this user and make sure that db session.30 doesn't have it. So I need to import db. So pretty good. And then the other option, if, if you don't want the auto commit, you can just edit the code and remove it or you can just do auto commit false and then you can you can get the session as a variable so, so whatever you yield from the context manager function you can get it here as a variable that's local to the uh, to the context manager block and here you can say i don't know you can, you can add uh, a new user And then you can add it to the session and commit it if you want. And that works too. So you have both ways to, to do this. So let me show you one more time the code. And typically th this is so simple that I, I, I don't know of any packages uh, that you can install that do this. Uh, in general, I always end up writing this uh, for each of my projects. Uh, and uh, basically, that's how I manage the sessions. This is actually so convenient that many times, even in uh, in request handlers, in, in Flask view functions, I, I decide to use the context manager because it auto commits for me. I don't have to remember uh, to, to commit. It makes the code simpler, more readable. So. It, uh, in general, this, this is better than, uh, than having to explicitly commit. So there you go. That was one, two, three, and four tips that I hope will improve your usage of SQL opening. So I uh, hope you liked it. Thank you so much. See you next time.